Do not worry. Well, howdy, folks. Welcome to episode 15 of Do Not Worry. I'm your host, Anthony, coming to you once again from the heart of Beirut and Jayatewe. Welcome to my channel. Welcome to a new episode of the podcast. Please take a second to like this video. Leave a comment. Your engagement, Hashtag engagement. has done so much to help this channel. Folks, we are almost at 2.5K subscribers that's crazy if you have not subscribed to the channel please do so become a do not warrior let us reach the 3000 subscriber mark which i like to call the i love you 3000 subscriber mark thank you folks this episode is light on drama there is no influencer drama this week okay i'm staying away from all of that i mean a everyone was behaving okay no one did anything stupid to be fair uh but i'm gonna i'm gonna focus on, on things that i actually give a shit about like ufos okay shit's popping in the ufo sphere y'all have been sending me that the pentagon has confirmed a ufo video and some pictures we are going to talk about it i know folks i know we're gonna talk about it shit's crazy um, it's the two-year anniversary of Avengers Endgame. We are going to react to a rap song that I did two years ago to celebrate the release of Avengers Endgame. So we're going to do that. We're also going to talk about my stint as Lebanese Batman, the Beirut Bat. It was me, folks. Surprise, surprise. Um, we're going to talk about that. And of course, at the end of the episode, I'm going to hit y'all with some Netflix recommendations. We're going to talk about some movies. Okay. So uh, before we get to any of that, though, I do want to talk about a couple of things. There's a couple of charities that I would like to not charities, but sort of um, initiatives. There's one called Nahna Dawik uh, 2021. It is I think it's a group of French uh, of Lebanese people living in France who are trying to send milk boxes to Lebanon. So I'm going to have the uh, the link in the description for you guys to help out. Um, they're at 50% of their goal. There's 39 days, I believe, as of this shooting. So if you can donate, if you can do anything to help, uh, that would be fantastic. And there is another initiative. Some people are trying to raise money. Um, it's the Barbara Nassad for cancer patient support. So she's trying to raise some money to help cancer patients pay for their treatment. So I'm going to have the link for that in the description as well. Your support is super appreciated, guys. Thank you so much. And it's time to announce the winner of the bees line giveaway folks we got so many comments hundreds of comments for the bees line uh, giveaway thank you so much i randomly i literally like opened up all of the comments and i scrolled up and down closed my eyes and then let sort of the the scrolling stop automatically and randomly and it landed on magali nasar who commented watching it again today because it's the bees knees magali i'm gonna get in contact with you we'll figure out how to send you your bees line goodies Thank you to everyone who commented. I wish I could give everyone a present. Obviously, uh, I can't do that. But, uh, you know, hopefully we'll have some more giveaways in the future. I'll try to figure some stuff out. But thank you so much for everyone who tried to, to win. For everyone who commented, I really appreciate it. Uh, Magali, I hope you enjoy your, your sunscreen. Okay, listen, folks. I know you might be thinking I'm overdoing it with the alien stuff. Some, some crazy shit's happening in 2020 and 2021. The the Pentagon has been confirming more stuff than ever. Like world governments are being more transparent with this stuff than ever before. So it leads me to think that something is going on. You know, I'm still very suspicious, and the fact that governments are being so open about this now is starting to make me feel that like governments. This is maybe something that the government has like created or something. Listen, I don't know. We're not going to get into that right now. But aliens, okay, UFOs, the Pentagon has confirmed a video that was shot by the Navy in 2019 and that was leaked by Jeremy Corbell, who is a documentary maker, filmmaker. He's a huge UFO um, enthusiast and uh, investigator. So he had leaked a video. Someone, had, someone from the military had leaked a video to Jeremy not too long ago. And it was recently confirmed by the Pentagon to be real. Let us watch that video right now. So here is the original footage without any sound or anything. So you'll see that triangular shape right there that's glowing in the sky. And there's actually two more triangular shapes above it. If you can notice them, they're dimmer. They're not really glowing. Uh, so this was shot by the Navy again completely confirmed uh, There's actually a version with like audio. It seemed like there was music coming out of these triangular shapes. It's weird It sounds kind of familiar it reminded me of someone Oh, 
Okay, and like, uh, you know, to make it more official, like, this is just some random video here. It was on the news, okay? It was officially on the news. Check it out. In night vision video from a Navy destroyer, a mysterious flying triangle above the deck of the ship. The Pentagon confirming the images obtained by documentary filmmaker Jeremy Corbell were taken by Navy personnel, expected to be a part of a report on unidentified aerial phenomenon to be presented to Congress this summer. Already online, some skeptics say the images are caused by cameras trying to focus, but some of the objects go beyond just flying in the sky. One shows a spherical object dipping into the ocean, similar to an incident in Puerto Rico, where an object was tracked buzzing an airport, then flying into the water, popping back out before appearing to split into two and disappearing. Over the last several weeks, some of the nation's top former intelligence officials have been raising eyebrows. We talked about these videos in my alien special. In December, ex-CIA director John Brennan said it was arrogant to believe there are no other forms of life other than the ones on Earth. And former intelligence chief John Radcliffe says officials have been tracking technology beyond our capabilities. We're talking about objects picked up by satellite imagery that are difficult to explain. From that encounter and two other incidents were officially released by the Pentagon last year. Now new signs that the Pentagon could declassify more sightings of what they can't explain. And guys, now here's the thing about those last three F-18 videos. I recently asked uh, the former director of uh, the Advanced Aerial Threat Identification Program at the Pentagon, point blank, are those the only videos that the government has? He said no. Those were probably the least compelling videos. And in some videos, you see an object about 50 feet away from the cockpit. Ooh. Guys. Okay, that's crazy. Okay, so that's pretty crazy. So that video has now been confirmed. But as they said in the report, and as I've discussed before at length on this podcast, episode seven, again, the alien special um, last year in 2020, the Pentagon confirmed three videos that were caught by uh, fighter pilot jets. Uh, one of them was called the Tic Tac, one of them was called the Gimbal, and one of them was called the Go Fast, the Tic Tac, which was chased by Commander David Fravor with three other pilots. They all got a very good look at it. So... That stuff has already been confirmed by the Pentagon. Uh, it just, I guess, didn't make that much of a wave. This confirmation seems to be making a lot more of a bang. But that's not the only thing that got confirmed. It wasn't just that video, as if that wasn't enough. We actually got some pictures confirmed by George Knapp. George Knapp is a legendary UFO investigator. Um, he and I, and I had seen one of these pictures a few months ago, actually. But it wasn't confirmed yet. Well, the Pentagon has gone ahead and confirmed three pictures of one UFO that, that is called the Acorn, nicknamed the Acorn, one that is called the Metallic Blimp, and the other that is called the Sphere. Um, here's the Acorn. Now, this is, you see it, like, this picture was taken, I think, with a cell phone from inside of a cockpit of a fighter pilot jet. Um, now, you see it in the distance here, and then you can zoom in, kind of, and you can get a look at what it looks like it's like an invert it's like an acorn a huge acorn just floating in space again this has been confirmed by the pentagon so this isn't me just pretending or like you know trying to imagine shit it's right there pentagon has been confirming it uh, this is the blimp the metallic blimp as you can see it exactly looks like a blimp but apparently you know it does not behave like anything or any technology that we have um again confirmed by the pentagon i'm going to keep repeating that uh, so that is the metallic blimp finally the sphere uh, this is the sphere. Um, I've heard of a lot of uh, like there's a lot of Navy pilots have mentioned seeing these transparent spheres floating in the sky with cubes inside of them. I know that sounds very weird. This is all coming from military personnel. So uh, this is the third kind of UFO, the sphere, and these are all confirmed by the Pentagon now. So with these three pictures and that video being confirmed, we're one step closer to having the government sort of at least starting to reveal some stuff. And I mean, look, we've had... We've had a bunch of people come out and say stuff like, for example, the former Israeli, um, former Israeli space security chief says extraterrestrials exist and Trump knows about it. Former Israeli space security chief has sent eyebrows shooting heavenward by saying that Earthlings have been in contact with extraterrestrials from a galactic federation. The unidentified flying objects have asked not to publish that they are here. Humanity is not ready yet. 
Now, a respected professor and retired general, Ishad said that the aliens were equally curious about humanity and were seeking to understand the fabric of the universe. He said the cooperation agreements had been signed between species, including an underground base in the depths of Mars, where there are American astronauts and alien representatives. Now, obviously, some of this stuff sounds pretty crazy, but just the fact that you have these high ranking officials that worked for the government, different governments, Israeli government, Canadian government, U.S. government, just saying this stuff, whether not all of it has to be true, but if just 5% of this shit is true, that's already pretty insane. There was an agreement between the U.S. government and the aliens. They signed the contract with us to do experiments here, he said. And that is like that is an infamous conspiracy theory that President Eisenhower signed the deal with aliens in exchange for their technology. He would allow them to experiment on humans like a lot of this stuff. There's so many conspiracy theories and stuff like that. They've been waiting until today for humanity to develop and reach a stage where we will understand in general what space and spaceships are, he said, referring to the Galactic Federation. So, I mean, is the stuff that he's saying, does that confirm the existence of aliens and stuff? I mean, not necessarily, but again, it just makes you think the fact that it's coming from someone like him. For example, uh, Canada's ex-defense minister, Paul Hellier, also believes that aliens have visited Earth, that there's a galactic federation, all of that stuff. So, and here's something very interesting. The former UFO program chief at the Pentagon, Luis Elizondo, detailed the three leading theories on where UFOs originated from and the five defining characteristics of UFOs. So basically, yeah, there are three theories for what these UFOs are. And they're extremely logical. So according to Luis Elizondo, the first highly unlikely theory purports that UFOs are secret U.S. technology that has flown under the radar due to a lack of communication between government agencies. That is honestly what could be the likeliest if we don't want to be cynical and if I want to be grounded and stuff. I would say that this is super secret government technology that even high ranking military officials don't know about because of how secret it is. That could be what it is. But again, these objects and these UFO sightings have been happening for decades, for decades and decades and decades. So unless you expect me to believe that the US government has had this technology for 70, 80, 90 years, it does make it harder to believe. The second theory speculates that UFOs are foreign adversarial technology created without the intelligence of the US government. So this is technology from Russia. This, is a, this could be technology from China, any other country, any other global superpower. Again, this is unlikely because the Russians are having very similar sightings and visitations. So are the Chinese. So is every other country on Earth. So unless every government, every global government has this secret technology and no one's communicating and nobody knows about it and everyone thinks it's aliens. Hey, that could be another option. And Luis Elizondo goes on to say that like if if this is foreign adversarial technology, this would be a huge intelligence failure of the United States because we've been technologically leapfrogged, he says. Elizondo stopped short of concluding that UFOs could be alien technology when discussing the third and final theory. If it's not ours and it's not another country, well, then it's someone or something else. Aliens, baby. So, I mean, that's basically what it is. You have a guy who works at the Pentagon, the former UFO program chief at the Pentagon, basically telling you it's either super secret U.S. technology, but that's very unlikely because that means almost no one knows about it. It's either foreign technology, which is also very unlikely, and that would be a massive failure of U.S. intelligence, or it's from somewhere else. So... But we're going to be getting some more information in June because last year, uh, when... President Trump signed the COVID relief bill, the $2.3 trillion COVID relief bill. In that bill is a provision that the Pentagon has to release as much information as it can about what it knows about UFOs. So the legislation which President Donald Trump signed into law was a bureaucratic nesting doll that ran more than 5,500 pages and contained the Intelligence Authorization Act for fiscal year of 2021, which itself carried an unusual provision in its committee comment section beneath the understated heading Advanced Aerial Threats. The stipulation mandates that the Director of National Intelligence work with the Secretary of Defense on a report detailing everything the government knows about unidentified flying objects, known in agency lingo as unidentified aerial phenomena or anonymous aerial vehicles. It must be made public, and when it is, it will be big, former Intelligence Director John Radcliffe said in an interview recently. Frankly, there are a lot more sightings that, than have been made public, Radcliffe told Fox News host Maria Bartomoro on Friday. The report must include detailed analysis of unidentified aerial phenomena data and intelligence gathered by the Office of Naval Intelligence, the Unidentified Aerial Phenomena Task Force, and the FBI, the provision reads. So, I mean, this is pretty insane. And we're going to be getting that in June. When exactly in June, I'm not sure. But, like, the time is getting closer and we're going to be finding out a lot more. Again, I don't know why all of this is happening now. It feels like everyone's talking about UFOs. It feels like this is more mainstream than ever. Could this be a global 
marketing push to get us ready for this mentally. Look, I don't know. I don't put anything past global governments. Okay, this is my cons uh, conspiracy side coming out a little bit. Conspiracy podcaster. But this is fucking interesting. Okay, let me know what you guys think of the comments. What do you think now that the government, the US government has essentially confirmed that, yes, there's a bunch of shit flying around that we don't know what it is. They confirmed it a few months ago, but they've just confirmed it again. So if you don't believe in UFOs, what is your excuse? Please let me know in the comments. For everyone else who, who, who's right there with me and who agrees and believes in this shit, how fucking crazy is this? And can you wait for June? I personally cannot wait for June to get here. Let's see what the fuck happens. Two years ago, it feels like a lifetime ago, but two years ago, Avengers Endgame, the second highest grossing movie globally of all time, right after Avatar, um, it was released. Uh, it made so much money. I love that movie. I'm a huge comic book fan. I'm a huge fan of the MCU. I was extremely excited about that movie. And I was so excited, in fact, that I made a rap video, a fucking Avengers Endgame rap song in anticipation of the movie. Okay, it was on an older channel. Uh, so we're going to watch that rap video together in celebration of the two-year anniversary of Avengers Endgame. Man, it was so much fun fucking watching that movie in a the movie theater. It was such a blast when Cap catches Thor's fucking hammer, man. People went fucking ape shit. Oh my god, uh, I, miss, I miss going to the movies, let's just put it that way. But anyways, let's, let me not waste any time. We spent the last couple episodes watching other people's stuff and cringing. It's time to cringe at Anthony. It is only fair... Okay, that I make fun of myself, folks. Although I'm very proud of this rap song. Okay, the music video was shot by my buddy Joe Mobid. Joe, love you, buddy. Thank you so much. I miss you. The song was produced by Mr. Ramsey Rahman. Mr. Ramsey, thank you so much, my guy, for the music production and shit. Let us get into this. The D, the D. Yo, I ain't a rapper. I hope y'all ready for Endgame. So this is it, we made it, it's part two Who would've thunk it? Well not me, and not you And hey, you're talking trash, thinking I'll fake, fake It's ten game season, bitch, too fucking late Snap your fingers for me, end it quickly Spidey sense tingling, feeling sickly Mr. Stark, I don't wanna go This shit is dope, man, I can't cringe Mr. Stark, I don't wanna go Damn, post infinity, I need immunity Don't feel safe in my town, no in my city Pay the Thanos for me, don't think he likes me Need all the help I can get, but how can that be? Damn, Mr. Stark, I don't wanna go. Mr. Stark, I don't wanna go, wanna go. Mr. Stark, I don't wanna go. Mr. Stark, I don't wanna go. Damn. We're getting closer now, close as we'll ever be. Crawling down my spine in every ounce of me. Damn. The OG 6 Avengers heading to battle. Y'all know them fuckers dead, slaughter the cattle. Damn. Mr. Stark, I don't wanna go. Mr. Stark, I don't wanna go, wanna go. Mr. Stark, I don't wanna go Mr. Stark, I don't wanna go It's been a pleasure, y'all It's meant a lot to me From Favreau, Whedon, and Gunn Russo's to Kevin Feige Over a decade, man, I'll never forget it Did it first and did it best Go get it, Endgame Yeah, this, I ran out of lyrics by the end This is pretty bad All right, The dancing is bad, I'll admit I don't wanna go Mr. Stark, I don't wanna go Mr. Stark I don't feel so good. I hope the movie's actually good. Oh god. Okay, okay. it's not that bad. Okay, it's not that bad. Like I'm sorry, I thought I would cringe a lot more. It really wasn't that cringy, okay? The fucking the beat. This was uh this was a Mac Miller and God, I can't remember who else, but like obviously this isn't my beat. Yeah, I wrote this when I was in the middle of the desert in Saudi Arabia shooting a reality show. I was part of the creative team. I wasn't com competing in the reality show. Let me know what you guys think. Leave a comment below. Do you think the song is cringe? Do you like my Avengers Endgame rap song? Do you think it is an underrated rap gem? I happen to believe so. This is a treasure, folks. This is a rap treasure, okay? When people will talk about Lebanese rap 10 years in the future or 20 years in the future, they will reference my Avengers Endgame rap song, Mr. Stark. In December and January of 2019, I briefly donned the cowl and became the Lebanese Batman. I went down to protest uh, just once. I did it once. Okay, I'm not going to lie. But as Batman, and that one time was enough to teach me many lessons. Uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about being the Lebanese Batman, why I stopped, you know, why I only ever made one appearance at one protest. Uh, but it was definitely an honor to be known as the Lebanese Batman. 
if ever so briefly. Uh, but I wanted to show you guys some stuff like a video that I've never shown before. Um, there's some pretty funny shit, actually. So for, why did I do it? I honestly, look, I... After like a couple of months of protesting, I was starting to kind of lose hope. You know what I mean? Like it had been October, November. Uh, I felt like nothing was happening. Obviously, it was naive of me to think that we were going to change everything in a couple of weeks. But, you know, and I felt like people weren't going down anymore to protest as much. Like the numbers were dwindling every single time. Every time I'd ask my friends to join me, less and less people were down to go down. So I figured I needed to maybe do something to get people excited again, get them hyped about going to the protest. And as dumb as it sounds, try to give people hope. At least that's how I saw it. I figured if there was a little kid who's seven years old or eight years old or like 10 years old and he sees Batman, like my costume, the rest of the costume was pretty shit, but like at least the cowl, this is an official replica of the Batman Begins cowl. I'm very proud of this. I won it on eBay accidentally. I fucking love this thing. It's a nightmare to put on and take off, but I mean, it's a fucking gorgeous cowl, if you ask me. So I figured if a kid sees Batman walking around the Thoda, it'll give him hope. He'll be like, holy shit, like Batman is on our side. At the very least, Batman has my back if something goes wrong. So I like that. And a bunch of kids ran up to me. Like there was a kid who like hugged my leg and grabbed me and asked me where my Batmobile was parked. Like shit like that is cool. It's priceless. Honestly, you can't put a price on shit like that. And moments like that. So uh, that's why I wanted to do it. And in that respect, I thought it was pretty successful. Like a bunch of memes ended up coming out of the whole thing. People were posting about it everywhere it went kind of viral so um i liked it and uh, megaphone news uh which i'm a huge fan of actually like featured me i had no idea they were even filming me filming me as i was walking here and check it out this is some pretty cool candid street footage by megaphone news And I think the camera guy here tried to like tap my shoulder to tell me something and I just kept walking because a bunch of people were tapping my shoulder and trying to take pictures and at one point it got kind of annoying. But the best part of that, look, look at the neck part, it's such a good cow. Okay, that's that there's this moment right here. Okay, so here I was taking like photos. Well, here, check it out. Some people came up to take some pictures. I'm like waving at people like I'm the fucking queen or something. Okay, so here I start like a bunch of people walk up and start taking pictures, which again, I don't mind. I'm walking around in a fucking bat suit. What do I expect people to do? Okay, so that was the first one. But then you're going to see like... And I follow this guy on Instagram since that happened. So, hey, what's up, man? Forgot your name. Again, more than happy to take pictures with people, but it's starting to get, like, a little bit too much. Like, I can't even walk. You see what I mean? Like, people just grab me. <laughs> Another one. Right, check this out. Oh... <laughs> Okay. Just completely deny this last guy, dude. Let me watch the last part again. Oh, oh fuck, dude. That's so awkward. I'm so, like, it sucks that that's on camera, but it's also pretty cool. You guys get to see it. So... Yeah, I mean, also, I mean, why I never did it again? Why did I never go back down as Batman? Um, it's frankly very dangerous. It would have been pretty fucking dangerous because uh, I can barely move. So when you guys will notice, this thing has to go over like my neck. So like my head has to fit through the neck part. This is very hard to wear and very uncomfortable. So I can't really turn my neck. I have to turn my whole back and my shoulders if I want to turn left or right. So it makes mobility very difficult. So in case some a fight breaks out between some protesters and the police or something and I have to turn or I have to run, this is going to make it very difficult. I also normally wear glasses. It's very difficult to wear glasses over this and my vision becomes kind of limited. Uh, and if we get into tear gas and some people start throwing tear gas, it's hard for me to wear a mask over this. So again, it just makes it a little bit more complicated. I also have a cape which is makes it very easy for people to step on the cape. I'll get choked. 
If someone wants to try to get in a fight with me, police or anyone, they can easily grab the cape and use it to my disadvantage. So the bat suit is in no way made, even though it looks cool and I look like I can kick some people's ass, it is in no way made to be used in a fight or like dangerous scenario. This is just for like looking cool and walking around and taking pictures. That's pretty much it. Also, I thought it would make me like a huge target for the police. Like I'll be the first fucking guy they want to beat the shit out of. And I didn't want there to be like a gif or a meme or a video of like Batman getting his ass handed to him by the police with like batons on the floor. I just thought that would be weird and I didn't want like A, I don't want to get my ass handed to me. And B, I did not want to disrespect Batman's name and legacy by having a Batman getting his ass beat in the street. And like also not just the, the police like Shabib al Khanda if they want to come out and beat my ass. I have a pretty huge target on my back wearing a fucking bat suit. So uh, it's just, it wasn't safe. It wasn't safe. And the, as soon as I got home from that one time that I did wear it, shit went crazy in downtown and I like just barely avoided it. So as much as I would love to be there as Batman helping people out, I would get my fucking ass handed to me. I would be blind. I would be choking. I could barely breathe with this thing. It is extremely hot because this is an extremely thick, 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 Dockies. This is a very thick kind of latex. It's, it's a fucking nightmare to wear, man. Nightmare to wear. The main reason I hung up the cowl and decided not to go down as Batman anymore was because I also didn't want people to think I was making the whole revolution out to be a joke, that I didn't take it seriously. I know there are people out there fighting for their lives, demanding their most basic rights. So I definitely don't want people to think I'm making light of that or that I don't take it seriously. So I also figured in terms of that, it was better for me to just, you know, one and done was probably best. Uh, but yeah, that is it briefly. But I did get this kind of badass footage that my friend Fidas, hi dad, shout out Fidas, filmed for me. So this is it, we made it, it's part two. Who would have done it? Well, not me and not you. Hey, you're talking trash, thinking I'll fake, fake. It's end game season, bitch. Too fucking late. Snap your fingers for me. End it quickly. Spidey sense tingling. Thank you guys for indulging my little Batman adventure. Let me know what you guys think about it in the comments. Did you see me walking around that day? Did you, did you have a picture with me or something? Let me know. And should I ever come back as Batman? I'm thinking, I'm thinking if we hit 5,000 subscribers, uh, maybe your reward will be a whole episode filmed as Batman, but I don't want to commit to it because that shit will literally kill me. I can barely breathe in that thing. But if you guys would be interested in a whole episode filmed as Batman, let me know in the comments. Okay, here is one of the most inconsistent segments that I have, which is the Netflix recommendations. Some weeks I have them, some weeks I don't, but I actually spent a lot of last week watching a bunch of movies. So I figured I would tell you guys about them. They're not all recommendations. I watched five movies. I'm going to tell you about all five of them and briefly what I thought of them and whether or not you should watch them. Uh, and they're all on Netflix. So if you have a Netflix account, you're good to go. Um, Adrift is the first one that I'm going to talk about. Uh, I saw it is directed by Balthazar Kormakur. It stars Shailene Woodley, Sam Claflin, Jeffrey Thomas. Um, it's basically the story of this couple that gets stranded at sea after their sailboat gets caught in a storm. And it is basically their survival story. Um, I didn't like, I basically gave this movie a three out of five stars on Letterboxd. I didn't hate it. And I would still kind of recommend it for Shailene Woodley's performance mainly, but it doesn't do anything you haven't seen before. You know what I mean? Like there was a movie with, with Robert Redford called, what was the fuck? All is lost or something like that. That was, that deals with some pretty similar themes. Castaway does it better. Uh, Life of Pi does it better. It just doesn't offer anything really. But if you're into this kind of thing, even like open water, you get some slight, open water vibes so other movies do it better it's an okay film though like it, it, it it's not the longest film just the performance other than Shailene Woodley the other guy the guy who plays her boyfriend is not a, a good actor so he's kind of annoying and you don't really buy their chemistry but Adrift is a movie I saw it was interesting I don't regret seeing it but I also can't give it the strongest recommendation uh, yesterday yesterday is directed by Danny Boyle I've been wanting to watch this movie for a while it came out in 2019 uh, but again, recently got added to Netflix. It's a very interesting story. It tells the story of a struggling musician who gets hit by a bus. He doesn't die, but like he gets you know re pretty injured. As soon as he wakes up from, from you know, in the hospital, he realizes he now lives in a world where the Beatles never existed. So Beatles music, no one knows it. So he pretends that he wrote the Beatles music and basically you see his career skyrocket because he pretends to be the guy who created 
the Beatles music. It's really funny. It's really well done. Uh, I quite liked it. Like, it's not the greatest movie ever made. I think I gave it a 3.5 out of 5. Solid 7 out of 10. Uh, you won't regret it. It's fun. It's a light movie, you know, on Netflix. Easy watch. That is one of the ones that I would recommend to watch. The Florida Project. I quite like this one. This came out in 2017. It is directed by Sean Baker. It tells the story of a mom and her daughter. It's, they're, they're a, she's a single mom. They're a struggling family. They live in this, like, apartment complex in Florida, um, it's very like realistic. It's ca st slightly documentary style. Um, I quite like the movie. It's very raw. It's very realistic. It offers an interesting slice of life of these, you could say, underrepresented sort of uh, people, lower um, income, uh, white folks who are struggling. Um, it's, it's interesting. It's a very solid story. Uh, Willem Dafoe, one of my favorite actors of all time, gives a very heartwarming performance in this film. I really like him. The young girl who, who, who's in it uh, is, is incredible. She's very, very talented. So definitely a movie I recommend. Uh, Love and Monsters. This is a Netflix original film. It is directed by Michael Matthews. Uh, it stars Dylan O'Brien as, uh, as a guy who is basically like this is a, a post-apocalyptic world. Monsters have taken over the world. This guy was with his girlfriend at the time the attack started. They get separated. He's been living underground for seven years. He finally decides to leave the underground bunker and try to find his ex-girlfriend seven years later. Uh, and he is kind of a coward. So he freezes when he sees monsters. It's tied to some trauma that he experienced in the past. So I actually found this movie to be very light, to be very fun. It's a fun adventure. I liked a lot of the monster designs. I thought they were very creative. The character designs are cool. I'm a big fan of like big of special effects and creatures and monsters so this was a fun watch for me i liked it more than i thought i would i thought that dylan o'brien's character would get a little bit annoying he didn't it was fun i liked it breezy movie again it is on netflix and i think it did pretty well it was number one on the lebanese top 10 so i'm sure a lot of you already saw it uh, and if you did let me know what you guys think of every every movie that i discussed let me know what you guys thought about them if you saw them uh, another film that i saw most recently was concrete cowboy it is directed by ricky staub it stars idris elba and caleb mclaughlin who is the one of the young actors from stranger things I liked this movie, didn't love it. I thought some of the performances weren't great. I think Idris Elba really struggles with an American accent. Like, he's tried it so many times, and man, he cannot get it right. He really, really, really struggles. Uh, Caleb McLaughlin from Stranger Things gives a pretty solid performance, but he comes off as slightly annoying and whiny at times. I get it, it's his character. Uh, another character as well, I forgot his name, the actor, but he was in uh, When They See Us on Netflix. He's also kind of annoying. So, I don't know, a lot of the performances I thought were a little bit overdone or, in Indris Elba's case, just a horrible accent. I like the story. It's this kid who gets sent to live with his father in Philadelphia. His dad is like a cowboy in Philly. It's kind of weird. It's this thing that, it's this tradition that still exists to this day. Good drama. It's a story about a kid and his dad trying to grow closer together while trying to maintain this heritage. I just didn't love it, I would say, but I'm, I'm a huge sucker for Westerns, and this is definitely a very unique take on a Western. So um, I enjoyed it. I would recommend it, but I would give it a tepid recommendation. The movies out of these that I would definitely recommend the most are Yesterday, Love and Monsters, and The Florida Project. These three are a lot of fun. And what's coming out this week? Mortal Kombat comes out this week. So I'm going to be checking that out with my friend Danny on his big ass projector. If you guys uh, want to get together with some friends and watch Mortal Kombat, that'll definitely be w the thing to watch this week. Whew, folks, I'm not going to lie to you. I forgot to record the audio for the outro. I started uploading the footage, got rid of the whole set, packed everything up, realized that I fucked up, so tried to put everything back together the way it was. Hopefully this all looks the same. Hopefully I have managed to fool you. Are you fooled? I hope so. Guys, thank you so much for taking the time to watch episode 15 of Do Not Worry. I really appreciate it. We talked about a lot of crazy shit this week, so let me know in the comments. What do you guys think about the Pentagon confirming that UFOs are real. If you guys were on the fence before, let me know if you're convinced now. Let me know if you liked my Avengers Endgame rap video. Was it cringe? I don't think so. What do you think about my stint as the Lebanese Batman? And did you watch any of my Netflix recommendations? What do you think? Let me know in the comments below. Thank you so much for your engagement. Like the video, subscribe to the channel, become a Do Not Warrior. Help me cross the I Love You 3000 mark. We're almost there, almost at 2.5K. That's fucking awesome, guys. As usual, thank you so much and do not worry.